Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will have a look at how to display cards on the initial stage including randomize which player go first at the start of each match. First player is then shown 3 random cards, but 4 cards for the player going second. In this case, we will use several UI cards. You can use several images to represent the UI cards or download the star project from the link below. If you are curious about how to create cards by UI, I highly recommend you to watch my previous video. Alright, let's get started. Okay, here is our previous unit project about how to display card with the same spacing. On that tutorial, we use C Sharp script to control the spacing between each card. Today, we will try to set up each point position manually because we are going to make the initial card stage at the start of each match. Each player will receive 3 or 4 cards in this stage. We don't need to consider many other conditions. Their cards will always appear on the fixed position. Hold Command N or Ctrl N to create a new scene. As I said, the reason I choose to set up each point manually is that on the initial stage, all cards were located on a particular position and never change. All possible positions are the fixed position. Create one empty game object and set his transform component. Make sure we have selected this game object. Hold Command D or Ctrl D to duplicate this game object twice. If we want our left point X position is negative 3, we can directly set the X position to negative 3 or drag to the right position carefully. Actually, we have another method to drag our game object easily. We can go to the edit toolbar and select snap setting. The default move X value is 10, which means if we drag the game object with holding command button or control button, our game object will move in 10 unit. If we change the move X value to 3, try to hold command button or control button to drag our game object. Our game object will move in 3 units and escape many other positions. Drag again. His position will always jump to 3 units. Here, we even don't need to import some position value inside the transform component. Let's change their name first. Each point will be one particular position of our card if our card's number is the odd number. In other words, our card number is 3. If our player card's number is an even number, we also have to manually set up their positions. Select one of the game objects and duplicate one. Set his X position to 1.5. Then change to one remarkable gizmo instead. We can duplicate three times and hold command buttons or control button. Drag them to the correct places. Additional, create one empty game object and select the same functional game objects as a child of this empty game object. We want to make them as a group. It's super handy for us to check in the hierarchy. But don't forget to reset the empty transform component first. Then, we can create one empty game object called Position Manager, which will hold our new c -sharp script, Position Manager. Inside Visual Studio, first, we need two game objects follow square brackets, which means this is an array. We need to store our player cards in this game. This variable contains a collection of the game object type together. Then, we shall declare our initial cards position. We also used array to store a collection of the transform type together. Our player will face two conditions. One condition is we play the game first or second. If we play first, we'll receive three cards which means our three cards will be located on the odd transform positions. The second condition is there. If we play second, we will receive 4 cards and all of our cards will be located on the even transform positions. Let's create one customized method. Inside this method, we need to make one if statement. If our card's length modulus operate 2 is equal to 0, 
which means our cars is an even number. Modulus operator returns the remainder of two numbers. If the first number is even number, the result will return to zero. So else, if the result is not equal to zero, we will get three cars and our cars should located on the odd position. In the first conditions, we want to initialize all of our cars inside this for loop. New vector 2. Inside vector 2, the even transform i dot position dot x comma even transform i dot position dot y. In other conditions, if we have three cards, just copy and paste this part in here and change the even transform array to odd transform array. Also, don't forget to call these methods at the beginning. Drag game object inside our slots. Let's first use the image test first. If we have four images, which means our images will be appear on these points. Cool. Also, let's change our current card array length to three. Great. Now we can try to test our UI card. And then press play. Hmm. Nothing happens. The reason is obvious we have talked about in the last tutorial. Our UI cards are created by UI cameras, but there is no any cameras in these things. Also, we need to attach each UI card game object as a child of our UI cameras. By the way, our UI cameras should be the world space mode instead of the overlay mode. So let's first go to the script and declare our cameras. We use transform type because we want to use transform.setParent in our script. We name our card as a new card, which is instantiated in this line, and give him the game object type. Write new card dot transform dot set parent. Inside the parenthesis is our word canvas transform variables. Back to Unity, let's create one new canvas. Change the canvas mode to word space and drag our main camera to here. Also, adjust the position X and the position Y to 0, 0. If you don't know why we do that, I highly recommend you to watch my previous episodes about how to make one card by UI. Because we want our UI card display like any other normal game object, we have to get rid of using overlay mode. In the future, if you want to drag and drop this card, using overlay mode will be very complex. Alright, drag our new canvas to the position manager slot and press play. Perfect. Now, our UI cards has been displayed on the screen. Change the cards length to 4 and test again. Cool. Next, we want to have two players. Each player will have one random order at the beginning of this game. Select our even transform group and add transform group first. Drag them down to the negative 1.5 y position. This is our player 1 card position. Then duplicate these two groups and make another several points for our player 2. Their y value should be 1.5. In order to see clearly, you can change their gizmo. Inside our script, since we have two players, which means we have two cards array, double click on our cards. Now we have to declare two cards for our each player. So how to fix our current script? Actually, we can type all of our codes 
inside only one single script. However, writing all of stuff inside one script is hard for us to check and read. Imagine we're making one project. We want our script easy to read, including for our teammates. So I would like to create one new C-sharp script called Game Manager. All of our player information and main control stuff will be returned inside this Game Object script, inside this Game Manager script. Our Position Manager script is only responsible for our player's each card display position. As I said, I want this script to control the game loop. We want to randomize our player's order. We need to store each player's current cards and all card game objects in this game. I use serialize field because I don't want this boolean type variables access from other script, but we want to check this variable value during play mode. Also create our player1 current cards. In this case, I choose to the list instead of array. Follow the list is his type. In here, our card type is game object. List looks like one dynamic array. List can be added or remove his elements in any time. Where array contains the fixed number. Array cannot be added or removed during game play. In our game, we don't know how much cards we have. Using list will be very handy and more flexible later. Also, we have to declare all of our cards in this game. This variable will store all of cards game objects in the game. These two variables store our player1 or player2, their own current cards. Make it clear, first we want to decide which player play first. We can declare one local variable to store a random number when we call this method. We use random.range 0, 100. In if statements, if this number is smaller than 50, our player 1 will move first. Else, our player 2 move first. We can call this method on the start method to see whether our two players will check randomly in the inspector. Focus on the inspector. When we press play, our player 2 is checked, which means our second player move first. So let's see whether our player 1 will move first. Cool. We have completed the random player stage. Then we want to receive the correct number of cards at the beginning. Let's create another method. One of the players will receive 3 cards if he moves first. Another player will get 4 cards, but he will move second. In if statements, we can first to write all of condition on our player 1. If our player 1 is true, which means player 1 move first, he can only get 3 cards. So we can loop the body of content 3 times. And each time we can give player 1 one random card from our cards array. We use the add to add the elements to our list. Attention to here, random.range will return the number between 0 to his maximum value, but inclusive the maximum one. Else, if our player 1 moves second, which means we can receive 4 cards, we can copy and paste the full loop code and only change the number to 4 which means we will run this loop 4 times. We can use debug.log to check whether our player 1 will get 3 numbers or 4 numbers. Call these methods on the star methods. When we press play, Oh, I forgot to drag the cars game object into cars array. We can drag all of our UI card game objects from our prefab folder inside the array and try again. On console window, if we move first, our player 1 card's number is 3. 
Don't worry about the four cards in the scenes because we did not instantiate our cards now. These four cards are created by our position manager. We will change them later. Now we have completed one method to check the reserve cards number for our player one.